happens with these uh, command control units is the shaft on the inside snaps. It's a very, very fragile part of the command unit. I'm going to show you how to dismantle this and how to repair the shaft. Um, save yourself a fortune. Dealers here in Australia want about $850 for this thing. Cost a couple hundred dollars to fit it. And they always fail after about four years. So let's um, pull it apart and I'll show you what to do. Thanks. Okay, the first thing we have to do is take this cap off here. Or take off the uh, surround, I should say. So do that. Use a small screwdriver and just put it on the edge there and lever it up. Spin it around. And you'll just see it unclips like that. It's a good idea to have a container to put all the components in. Once you've got the outside off, then all you do is using one of these little pointy tools, you just need to just need to take this ring off here, which just fell on the floor, but I'll leave that. Then you should be able to take off the cap here, which has got a little bit of glue on it, so you can always stick that on afterwards, so a little bit of double-sided tape, actually. There you go, so that's the centre screw out. So now that will just pull off. Turn the control unit over and we just have to remove all these torque screws here to separate the two halves. I'm going to use this here because it's quicker. Number 10 Torx bit. Now you can separate the two halves. Like that. So what we do is we lift the top section off, and then we lift off this, this fitting here, you can see the shaft, So the shaft is the shaft that breaks is actually inside this fitting here. The next thing we have to do is we have to remove all of these little posts here. That's where the switches are held when you move the control left, right, up, down. Best way to do that is to firstly remove these little rocker, uh, little rocker arms here and that, that's quite easy to do just using one of the pointy uh, hook tools, pointy tools just leave the side out and you'll see where it pivots There's the first one out. So there's four of those to get out. And underneath that is a spring that provides the uh, return mechanism. So you can see here there's a little post with a, a spring. So I'll just remove all these first. So that's all those out. Then I just need to get these little springs out. You can normally get them out by just putting it upside down. So that's what sits below the little levers. Here's another one. Okay. So 
So now that all that's apart, the next thing we have to do is take these posts off. And to do that, there is a little, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little clip, the wrong way, there's a little clip in here, I don't know whether you can see that, that you have to lever outwards and then the post slides off. So you can see that little clip there. So you need to get your little pointy tool under there and just lever it back a little bit to be able to pull it off the post. There you go. So all those are off. Now we should be able to take the circuit board out. So that just lifts up. And like that. So hopefully you can see that. The cable goes into that slot there. So you just need to get that out. and then just pull the circuit board off. Place that to one side. So you can see here the, how the shaft is broken and when you look when you look at this the amount of material actually holding the shaft in one piece is so minor it's so small there's only a few atoms of plastic here 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 and here because of this metal um, socket in the middle that takes the center screw to hold the knob on Okay, I'm back. I've drilled the end of the um, threaded piece of metal here with a 4mm drill bit just to provide some extra uh, surface area and grip for the glue. The other thing I've done is on the other end <coughs> I've just put some small hacksaw slots close to the centre on each one of these four um, veins on the on the shaft. This plastic is commonly used in motor vehicles. It's called POM plastic which stands for polyoxymethylene. So you need to provide some little slots there for the glue to key into. Um, the glue I'm using <coughs> is a two pack epoxy glue which uh, will glue most plastics. Okay, I've mixed up some of this epoxy, two part epoxy, so you don't need very much. And here's the two ends. What I've also done is I've cleaned the ends with some iso alcohol. Um, just this stuff is so difficult to glue. You just got to make sure everything's clean and there's no grease or any any other uh, material on them so I've done that so now I'm ready to put a small amount of glue on and we'll have a go Should be plenty. Okay, so that's in the right position. I can feel it. That that's actually in the position that it needs to be in. So the the broken ends are back together in their right position. Okay, this has bonded together quite well. Uh, it's only. <clears throat> only takes about five minutes. So what I'm going to do now, strangely enough, is I'm going to reinforce inside each web with a very small piece of matchstick. So with each one, I'm going to glue 
with the same epoxy glue, a little piece of matchstick in there to reinforce it even further. Okay, there you can see it now. I've got it clamped in the little tiny vise um, to cure, and you can see the small pieces of matchstick that I've placed in there for additional reinforcing. So don't worry too much if uh, the glue um, is uh, a bit of excess glue is. Uh, you know, going out line, outside the line of the shaft because you can trim that off later once it's all cured. So I'm going to leave that now for a while. Um, once it's fully cured, I'm going to get a bit, a bit of plastic dip spray and uh, spray over that um, just so it's all black again. So we'll see how we go. Thanks. This is bonded together really well. Um, if when you when I put pressure on it here, it actually bends in the middle rather than where the glue is. So I'm quite pleased with that. I've had another idea that may be even better way of bonding it, and that is to put uh, some hacksaw cuts across this section here, uh, which I'll probably do with the next one. But even then, the method I've come up with here seems to work really well. When this goes back together, you don't need to worry about any roughness here where the um, the glue is. The bearing surfaces are actually each end, so this end here and that end there. So I'm now going to start reassembling it. When I put it together I'm going to use some of this uh, lithium spray grease. This stuff's great. Um, I love this stuff. You can almost put it on your cornflakes for breakfast. It's really good for putting this sort of equipment back together. So Put a bit of that in there. You can see I've, I've taken all the gears out from the bottom. That goes like that. That's the square end that the shaft goes on. Spray a little bit on the cogs. Gears around. So now we can start putting it back together. So this goes back onto over the shaft like that. Remember the cable goes through that slot there. The circuit board just sits sits there. Now we put these little posts back on. They just clip, just push them straight on and they'll clip into place. Like that. So they go with the little leg. The little leg there faces the shaft in the middle and you can probably see Just here is the pivot hole. So you just got to clip them back. And I normally use those little pointy tools, they're handy for this sort of stuff. So if you get one in, that's the one that's one side in, and then I can pull the sides out so right so all the little rockers are back in place now the next thing to do is to put that fitting on there that just provides the spring springing mechanism 
because it's a it's rubber. And then you put this on. Those those little recesses there sit on top of those rubber posts there. So it goes like that. You can see how that how that works. The next thing to do is to put the top cover on. So there you go. Now we've got to put all those uh, torque screws back in. I'm just <coughs> tightening up the last of those torque screws. There's heaps of them. Okay, so that's it. All the, all the torque screws are back in. There's a total of 10 of them. So now we can start putting the control knob back on. I'm going to put a little bit of lithium grease in here as well. Not too much. So that just sits, just push it straight back on. Centre screw, pop that in. Number 10 Torx bit again. That's it. So that's on. Everything feels nice in there. I'll put the centre cap back on. It's still got the double sided tape there, so that's fine. So that just sits straight on the middle. Just push that on. Then the ring goes over the top of that. It clips into place. There's some little uh, recesses on the side of the knob there, so you just got to make sure those recesses are in place. That's it. So that clips in. And then there are three recesses in the outside ring that line up with those three raised sections there. So got to get them lined up. And just push it on. It snaps into place and that's it. So there you go fellas. That should work a treat. Thanks very much for watching. Next video is how to remove this and put it back in again. Thank you.